Good morning. My name is Anna Enstrenger. I'm the president of the Columbia X. Welcome to St. Pius X Parish Family Church. In order to preserve the dignity of the Eucharist that we are about to celebrate, please take a moment to silence all cell phones and other electronic devices. In the spirit of Christian fellowship, please turn to those near you, maybe to someone you do not know or someone alone, and extend a warm welcome. This morning, we would like to welcome our men and women of the dignified uniform who protect us. We also have a few dignitaries from our community. Mr. Arnold Jucker, our legislator for Nassau County, as well as Mr. Steve Rose, our youth minister, as well as the legislator for Nassau County, Councilwoman Vicki Walsh, and Councilman Louis Umbrota, representing Supervisor Joseph Saladino, our Graham Knight, Mark Cashman, The Blue Mass dates to September 29, 1934, when Reverend Thomas Day started the service as part of his duties with the Catholic Police and Firemen Society. The September 29th service was timed to coincide with Michael Mass, the feast of St. Michael the Archangel, the patron military saint of police officers and military. Last few weeks, we've had some terrible tragedies of losing our two young, vibrant NYPD officers, Jason Rivera and Wilbert Moore. And just two days ago, fire FYD, FDNY firefighter Jesse Gerard. Our parish felt, family felt we all need to come together, pray, and support our men and women who protect us. And here we are. Today is the seventh Sunday of the Ordinary Time. Today's reading continues the story of Jesus teaching the people that we began last Sunday. In it, Jesus tells us to love our enemies and do good to those who are cruel to us. Why does he tell us to do this? Why does, why does this tell us about what God is like and what God expects of us? Be merciful, as your Heavenly Father is merciful. The celebrant for our liturgy is Father Valentine. Our readers are Steve Rose, Louise Buchanan, and Michelle Muscola. The Mass is being offered for Leo Tall, third anniversary, Gregory Amato, NYPD officers Jason Rivera and Wilbert Mora, FDNY firefighter Jesse Gerard, and for all our law enforcement officers and first responders living. We now invite all our police officers and first responders, retired and active, to please join in the procession.
Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. But if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather love your enemies, do good to them, and lend expecting nothing back, then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. Stop judging and you will not be judged. Stop condemning and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down and overflowing will be poured into your lap. The measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. My beautiful parish family, this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we gather this morning to give glory and praise to God, I began by expressing deep, deep gratitude for the service and commitment of the first responders who are gathered here today as well as those who were not physically present. We hold in prayer. It is sometimes said that New York City is a city that never sleeps. Whether that is true or not, what is without a doubt true is a tremendous 24 7 vigilance and response that you provide as a members of the police, fire, rescue, safety departments of the campus of NASA and Suffolk and our New York State. Your professionalism, courage, and expert expertise allow us to sleep at night. On behalf of all of us, I again express thanks. And we will not be who we are today were it not for you and your faithful service. So this time I'll ask all those officers, firefighters, first responders, those are retired, those are in active duty, please rise. And I'll give them big rounds of applause. Because I had that kind of fear, the cops. 
They are like a terror, so you stay away from them. If you tell the truth, with the truth, whether you are right or wrong, you will get the bidding. So one day I went to the, with my clergy caller to Dunkin' Donut in North Port. And uh, the store owned by the Indian people. And uh, I asked for the coffee. And he wouldn't take the money. I said, why not? Well, we respect two people. First, the priest who take the spiritual affair of the people. And second, the police officers, they take care of the people. And that struck me. I said, wow, they do. But three times I was in trouble. Spitting. I was in Belmore twice on second Meadow. I was pulled over. One time I had a little wine, extra glass of wine. <laughs> and the cop said, sir, you know what you're doing? I said, yeah, I was a little spitting, sir. I told you to lie. Well, I had to go to church because I had the wedding rehearsal. So he said, you're a priest. I said, yeah, yeah. What church? What area? I said, Belmore. So he called the one of the police officers. I said, ah, he's a nice, he's a good-looking priest. <laughs> <laughs> he's a nice guy. He cares for the people. And the officer said, well, you have been vouched, so go slowly, Father. I said, okay, thank you. And second time I was spitting, I was spitting for the funeral mass. The cop pulled me over. I said, sir, I'm sorry, I was just spitting because I have to say the funeral mass. And I came to the parish and I saw that cop was there for the funeral mass. He saw me, I saw him. I said, thank you. He said, thank you. And I was rescued. And in October, one of the nun friends had come from Chile. And she was heading back to India. And we need to do the test for the COVID. If she has to fly, what's called the NCR test. So, so we, that test we were doing, and I went to Rima Head because we were just going over there. They said, You can't. So I called one of our parishioners, her husband, doctor, Dr. Cordero, and they lived in a El Mont area. So we had a few hours we were going to close, so I was spreading like 90. And I was pulled over by a cop. He said, sir, you know how far you're fast you're going? I said, yeah, I was spitting. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I said, nothing wrong with me because I'm a priest and this is a nun. She needs to have a NCR test because she's heading to India. Go slow, what's wrong with you? Then I showed the police car. Hmm, police car. So then he realized that priest, he came again, shouted at me. I said, oh, thank you, but you didn't give me spirit tickets. So I was very happy. <laughs> and here we are. And uh, I always uh, have a great respect for uh, men and women, the clothes they wear. And the amazing things they do, sometimes I don't realize how sometimes they have to do all the dirty job, dirty work. And they do with their dedication and love, respect. Sometimes their judgments are wrong. Sometimes they fail, they're human beings. And sometimes they've been coined that the bad guys. It happens. The church, and the clergy, we have seen all over the years, it's happening with the cops. But there are plenty of them, countless men and women, dedicated, they love their prayer, their responsibilities. And this is what we do. I just want to let them know, you are doing the good job. Keep up that good work. Focusing on today's liturgy of the word. The preacher's Sunday sermon was, Forgive your enemies. He asked, How many have forgiven their enemies? About half held of their hands. He then repeated the question, This time about 80% held of their hands. Then the preacher repeated the same question third time. The entire congregation held of their hands, except one elderly lady. Mr. Jones, the preacher asks, Aren't you willing to forgive your enemies? I don't have any, she replied. This is very unusual, the preacher said. How old are you? 93. Mr. Jones, please come to the front and tell the congregation how a person cannot have an enemy in the world. 
This little sweetheart of a lady thought her down the aisle and said, It's easy. I just outlive all those rascals. <laughs> and there's an old Irish prayer that goes like this. May God bless those who love us. And those who do not love us, may He turn their hearts. And if He does not turn their hearts, may He turn their ankles, so we may know them by their limping. <laughs> yes, it is in autobiography, the story of the experiments with truth. Mahatma Gandhi mentioned the Sermon on the Mount as one of the main religious works that inspired him to search for ways of bringing about political freedom for India but now violent resistance to operation. He writes, I came to see that the Sermon on the Mount was a whole of Christianity for one who wanted to live a Christian life. It is that sermon that has endeared Jesus to me. In 1947, when British India was divided into Hindu India and Muslim Pakistan, Mahatma Gandhi went on a hunger strike to end the communal violence which had erupted between Hindu and Muslim fanatics in the Indo-Pakistani border states. And during this time, a Hindu fanatic came to him and confessed, Mahatma, I will surely go to hell. No one can save me. Gandhi asked the man why he thought he was doomed to hell. The man replied that he was a Hindu and that a Muslim had killed his child during a riot. In revenge, he had slaughtered a Muslim child and his parents and felt very guilty afterwards. Gandhi said, I know one way to save you from going to hell. Find a Muslim child who has lost his parents. Take him home, bring him up and educate him so that he grows up as a Muslim in your Hindu family. Then you won't go to hell. When Mohandas Gandhi was down in 1948, Elijah Shah was to praise his palms together raise his folded hands to his lips in the Hindu sign of forgiveness. Martin Luther King was a great admirer of Gandhi. When a gang of racial fanatics set fire to King's house, an Afro-American mob gathered, ready to take revenge. But he told them, when you live by the rule an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, you end up with a nation of blind and toothless people. Then he led the gathering in prayer for the white brothers who had burned his house. And that is what amazing grace of forgiveness, the central theme of today's reading, is all about. The first reading shows us how David made the right choice, respecting God's anointed king by forgiving his offenses while Saul continued to make the wrong choices, perpetuating his own misery in seeking the revenge. And in response to your psalm, Psalm 103, the psalmist reminds us of the mercy of God, his compassion, which we should practice in our choices. In our second reading, St. Paul tells us how the first Adam made a wrong choice of disobedience, bringing death into the world, whereas Jesus, the second Adam, made the right choice of fulfilling his Father's saving plan for mankind by accepting acute suffering and heinous death. And today's Gospel gives us Jesus' revolutionary moral teaching about correct choices in our human relationship, based on the necessity of following the golden rule an obligation to behave like the children of loving, forgiving, merciful, and compassionate. Our relationship in our communities become truly Christian when we follow the golden rule. Do to others as you would have them do to you. 
Jesus amplifies the golden rule by giving additional commands for us to follow as a God children by explaining Christian love. Love your enemies. Be good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who maltreat you. Yes, Jesus orders us to love our enemies, to be merciful, compassionate to everyone. As a God, a loving Father is loving, merciful, <coughs> and compassionate. He concludes by instructing us to stop judging others, start forgiving all who offend us. After hearing these Gospels, what message we carry from outside of the church to your workplace, to your family, where you will be encounter the people as we continue to do the good things in our world. We need to do one thing. We need to practice the golden rule. The golden rule asks us to do others what we would like them to do to us. If you obey loving others, expressing that love by loving words and deeds, we will start receiving the same love from others in higher intensity. Further, if you want others to forgive our offenses, our words of criticism, our thoughtless judgments against them, then we should start forgiving their offenses against us and start appreciating their good qualities while encouraging them and supporting them in their needs. Second, we need to pray for the strength to forgive. At every Eucharist, at every Mass, we pray to our Father, asking God to forgive us as you forgive others. A challenge is to overcome our natural inclination to hate family members, co-workers, neighbors, and all offend us. To meet that challenge, we need to ask God for the strength to forgive each other. We must forgive because only forgiveness truly heals us. If we remember how God has forgiven us, it will help us forgive others. Help us start forgiving right now by curbing the sharp tongue of criticism, suppressing the revenge instinct and bearing patiently the irritating behavior of our neighbor. And to our men and women of law enforcement, responders. I can only imagine, I can only begin to imagine how certain situation you face take an emotional toll on you. These situations are only compounded by the daily stress you experience in your professions. It's in this context that again I invite us to look at the gospel message today to seek the help of others and a loving God. Our prayer today is that when the job starts to affect your personal and professional lives, that you and all the first responders have the faith, courage, and strength of, this, of the gospel as spoken to us, and we seek God's help. As first responders, there are undoubtedly times in which you have been an angel, sent by God to help a person in need. That same God sends angels to you in times of need. But as that angel may be the chaplain, a professional trained in a certain field of human science. When the need arises, welcome the angel into your life. As I finish this family, please know that I speak on behalf of all the parishioners here at St. Pius X. The Interfaith Clergy Group of Plainview Old Bay Beach. In expressing gratitude for the service that you and all the first responders render day in and day out to our communities. It is our prayer that you and indeed all of us be strengthened by the love of God whose only son lays down his life for us. If we look to God's love as a wellspring from which we can draw strength, may God bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. Please remain seated and please be profess our faith. We are going to recite the Apostles' Creed from your mass card. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. 
and in Jesus Christ, only Son of Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died in his burial. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the rejects of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It is time like to invite our youth minister as well as legislator, Pastor Steve Rhodes, to lead us to the prayer of the faithful. Dear parish family, the Lord calls upon <coughs> us today to pray for those who treat us badly and to go that extra mile. So let us ask Him for the grace, courage, and generosity to fulfill His holy will. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. In today's gospel, Jesus tells us clearly how, as Christians, we should live our lives. We pray for the insight to listen to his words, and in our own lives to be patient, generous, forgiving, compassionate, and non-judgmental. We pray most of all that we love our enemies, do good to those who hate us, and bless those who curse us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for tolerance in our country. We pray particularly for those who see the gospel as a threat to liberty, that their eyes be opened to the love and goodness of our Heavenly Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That those gathered here and all who serve in law enforcement and first responders will do so with the spirit of compassion, fairness, and the mercy which comes from God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we observe continued threats and hostility in Eastern Europe, we pray that all nations recognize the futility of war and work more strenuously for peace and harmony among all God's children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As our nation celebrates President's Day, God will bless our president and make us grateful for the liberty we enjoy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders and those who enact laws that protect the needs of their people, especially the most vulnerable in society, and that they provide those who enforce those laws with the support they need to uphold them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, for our law enforcement officers and first responders who have made the ultimate sacrifice in service to their community, we especially remember our brothers and sisters who have died this year and those who have died recently. NYPD Detectives Jason Rivera and Wilbert Moore, FDNY Firefighter Jesse Gerhard, that they and all the faithful departed will be brought into God's presence and that their families and friends will, cons will be consoled in their grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those suffering or recovering from sickness, surgery, addiction, and mental illness, including Jeff Duncan, Dr. Albert Caton, Angela Manzi, Rita Hansen, Mary Ellen Phelan, Ed and Audrey Coyne, Father Tom Cardone, and for those who have died recently, and for all who mourn, especially Robert Corrigan, Barry Couric, Jessica Jones, Father George Punti, Mary Castricani, Beatrice Elefante, New York firefighter Jesse Gerhard, Dorothy Morris, and for the intentions of each one here, including for Father Valentine's driving record, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and this Mass being offered for Leo Toth on the third anniversary of his passing, Gregory Amato, NYPD detectives Jason Rivera and Wilbert Mora, FDNY firefighter Jason Gerhard, and for all law enforcement and first responders living, we pray to the Lord. Lord. We bring these prayers to Mary, our beloved mother, and we all sit together. Help Mary, for the grace of the Lord is Bring your peace to a violent world.
peace in the hearts of all men and women, peace among the nations of the world. Turn to your way of love that whose hearts and minds are consumed by hatred. Comfort and console us, strengthen us in hope, and give us the wisdom and courage to work tirelessly for a world with true peace and love reign among nations and in the hearts of all. Amen. Amen. I'm going to bless the medals which have been purchased by the Colombians. Almighty God, whose great power and eternal wisdom embrace the universe, watch over all policemen and women, law enforcement officers, Father in heaven, please give them the strength and courage and perseverance to endure the unjust condemnation, danger, and physical abuse to which they are at times subjected. We recommend them to your loving care because their duty is dangerous. Dear God, grant these brave men and women your almighty protection. Unite them safely with their families after duty has ended. We are this great Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And dear Saint Michael, the Archangel, your name means who is like a God. And it indicates that you remain faithful when others rebel against God. Help all these police officers, first responders, of our day who strive to stir, stain the rebellion and evil that are rampant on all sides. Give them faithful to their God as well as to their country and their fellow human beings. Amen. After the Mass, as we give, we'll uh, give you these medals. It's very important and good to have the religious articles. It truly helps. When your God is absent from your life, we get in trouble. When you start your duty, say your prayer. Touch your religious articles, no matter what faith we have. Hold to that. And remember, in your duty, you're not alone. God is walking with you. We'll be at the offertory position. For the end of the earth, for ye creatures of the sea.
as you celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that when we offer to the honor of your majesty, may profit us for salvation. We ask this prayer to Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so love the world, that in your mercy you send us a Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we are lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and the saints, we to give you thanks as an exhortation we all acclaim.
those we do not love as we should. And Jesus reminds us in today's gospel. Remember all those who died in the our families, into our parish, those who died today, those who don't to pray for the forgotten souls and good memory, dear talk of his third anniversary. Gregory Amato, New York police officers, Jason Rivera, Wilbert Mora, and New York firefighter, Jesse Gerhard. Bring them home to you to be with you forever. Gather us all together into kingdom. There we shall be happy forever. With the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Mother of the Church. Saint Joseph, a most chaste father. Saint Pius the our patron, Saint St. Agnes, Father Pio. Saint Teresa of Cagnes, Saint Francis, Saint Michael, the guardian angels, and all the saints who have praised you throughout the ages. May merit to be coerced eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we aim in hate, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father forever, Amen.
Shakespeare. We are collecting old palms in preparation for Ash Wednesday. If you have palms in your house, maybe 50 years, 30 years old, please bring them old palms and uh, place them in the basket at the label at the back of the church so we can use those palms for the Ash Wednesday. Tuesday, February 22nd is a monthly day of preparation. The Blessed Sacrament will be exposed soon after the 8.45 a.m. Mass and remain exposed till 4 p.m. Please sign up for your half hour adoration in the rear of the church. We are giving you two months advance notice. Make a Lenten commitment to help save a life. There is an emergency shortage of blood available in our blood bank. The St. Father 10 blood drive will be held on Good Friday, Good Friday, April 15, from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Madonna Hall. Help us reach our parish goal of 100 pints. Please consider donating takes and less than our hour to save a life. I'm very grateful to one of our um, retired police officer, Aid, and his wife, uh, Kim Musi, for uh, taking the leadership to have this blood drive. So they both are here, so please give them big hands. Thank you. Our 20th annual St. Father 10 golf outing will be Monday, June 20th. Details will be available in the bulletin at the parish website. The money will be generated from this uh, uh, golf outing will be used to upgrade the bathrooms in the north, northern part of the school building which is presently occupied by ACDF. That program is for the Down syndrome. The parish will have the Thursday prayer service uh, on next Sunday. February 27 at 6 p.m. in the church organized by our youth director, Steve, and our youth crew. Please do come and participate in this spiritual event. It's a nice to come for the family. It's a beautiful atmosphere. You the lights off, and you can see the sanctuary, all the candles. And one of our, after the prayer service, we have one of our senior girl. Um, she'll be graduating this year from the POB High School. And uh, she's going to talk about her Catholic faith, how she practices Catholic faith in this public environment. It's a beautiful story she has, so I hope you will join us. The Knights of Columbus Monday Food Drive is the next weekend. All packs of will be closed Monday, February 21st, in observance of President's Day. Next weekend, uh, second collection is for the maintenance and repairs of the parish facilities. Thank you for your support and generosity. I want to thank the our President of Columbia, Anna, for taking this leadership and uh, having this beautiful Mass. So I want to thank her and the Columbia's for doing this wonderful job. After this Mass, we'll have a new hospitality in Madonna Hall. So next building, please don't leave, just come and join us. Of course, Bobby Pena is also another uh, police officer and always takes uh, videos and pictures, very important things, so we can put it on the parish website. So I'm very, very grateful to Bobby Pena. So give the rounds of applause. <laughs> I want to thank my special associates, Loretta uh, Dressler and Claudia Stewart for doing the amazing job. They make sure that everything goes smoothly. They're really my extended hands, so I want to be very grateful to them. I want to thank all the local uh, uh, leaders are here for participating in this mass and uh, being here to support our men and women in the cult, so I want to thank you very much. I want to thank the Knights of Columbus, uh, especially the Grand Knight, Mark, and our youth group under uh, the leadership of Steve Rhodes for uh, putting the flags around the church property so it looks more festive and just very patriotic so I'm very very grateful to them. And Town Bagel, Steve Coleman has been very generous so in the events we have he always gives a bagel and says, Father Val, how many bagels you want? I said maybe a thousand. He said, all right, I'll give two thousand. <laughs> so that's the kind of person he is. I'm very eternally grateful to him. And of course, music ministry, John and his beautiful wife, Robin Yakaki, you always do the amazing job. So please give them a <laughs> uh, And I thank you for our uh, beautiful readers over here, Steve, uh, Michelle, and uh, Louis Buchanan. And uh, we have three altar servers. They are the daughters of the police officers, uh, Valentin and Olivia. They're both the parents of police officers. And, of course, uh, Kelly, she her father is a police officer with the dog. So please give them <laughs> big rounds. I think that's all. I don't have any more.
jokes because I already shared the idea. All right. Please stand for a prayer and blessing.